Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna give you some tips to progress faster in Legend of Mushroom. So let's start with the number one. Every day you come there and click on that icon to buy some extra fertilizers and some extra seed as well. Generally I love buying 5 of each because this is the price you're gonna pay every day, 880. This is clearly not a lot but if you want to buy an extra one, look at the price increase. So I am buying these 5 times a day. Same comment for these because the next one is gonna start costing a lot. Make sure that all the time you are using the rarest seeds you have. It's going to take a bit more time, but the resources you are going to have inside are going to be way better. You are going to acquire more fruits and faster. So this is always the best thing to do. And something more at the farm, you want to use all your fertilizers every day to reduce the time you need to grow that. Look at that. This is a premium seed and it's giving to me 850. I got a lot also because I am increasing the level of my buildings, that one being the first you want to increase because you are going to have a growth a speed bonus but 25% and more quantity when you are going to harvest. Then that one because it's always better to have more quantity than speed first. And that one is going to be the third one. Make sure that you are doing all your arena battles every day and once you have no coupon left, buy some extra ones. You can buy 5 daily using 600 diamonds. You are gonna get some extra rewards and it's gonna help you to progress faster. You have to uh, target only the ones with less uh, power than you so you are... Uh, you are going to have more chance to win and once you have known left with less power than you, try to, to focus on some that are close to your power level. You can refresh all the time until you find someone that you can beat. Make sure that you are clicking on them before so you can check the stats and you can check as well if they are in the same families because you don't want to attack your guildmates, right? Then make sure that your gear has always the highest rarity you can get because the stats you are going to get are just completely crazy. Look at the difference for example, that piece of gear is legendary so it's the tier below that one. It has four more levels and look at all the stats I am losing. Even on the substat crit rate and regeneration I have way less than that one which is an immortal piece of gear. When you are facing this situation, look at that. That piece of gear has two more levels and it's giving to me more HP attack and defense. I am playing with a mage and so I'm going to need to have a lot of skill crit on my character to deal more damage. This is really important to take that into consideration because there I'm going to have some more evasion and some more stun. I need the skill crit first for my class, okay? So I am not going to equip that one, I'm going to sell it because the skill crit is everything I need on my account. The stun helps as well once I'm going to reach the level 100 but I'm not not 100 yet so I'm gonna sell that so the the tiny increase in stats you have it's all it's not all the time the best thing you want to focus on then let's talk about the prayer statue I am a mage a healer and so I need a ton of skill damage and this is what I have so far so you can look the stats you have but it's gonna cost then more fruits to roll the stats left but don't worry because the experience given by using the fruits are still gonna be the same. But by leveling up your statue, you are gonna unlock the second set and so more stats and as well you are gonna have more chance to get better stats as inside. Look at that, I have 5% chance to get some S tier and uh, on the next level I'm gonna have 2% uh, chance to get some SSS tier stats. But currently I am okay with the stats I have, this is perfect for my class and so I am currently saving my uh, fruits for later. Something else about the classes now, uh, a lot of you want to know what is the best class to use in the game. In fact, I would say that for now it doesn't matter because you don't have a high level on your account. If you reach the level 100, you are going to evolve into a kind of human and you are going to unlock the last skill for your avatar. Uh, it's 
then gonna matter a bit. You are gonna have a difference because it does matter to have all the skills on your class. But then it's just a matter of stats. If you are playing a healer, concentrate on having a lot of uh, skill based things. If you are an archer, on your combo and uh, basic attack speed. And if you are a warrior, on your counter and basic attack damage. And this is everything that does matter for now. About the future, when you are going to reach the level 110, you are going to need 6 of these to increase random stats on your hero. And then you are going to unlock the next evolution of your hero, if I understood that correctly. And then you are going to be able to use some uh, scrolls to power up your champion. So this is coming after the level 110. So I don't know anything more about that yet. Equip the pals and the skills you need in function of the content you want to focus on. For example, if I want to focus on PvP, I am a mage. I want to focus on that one, so I'm gonna have more HP regen. That one to lower the attack speed of the of the target. That one, so I'm gonna have my cooldowns on my skills more often. That one to increase my skill damage by a lot. This is the way to go with a healer, with a mage. And that one, so every time I'm gonna use a skill, I'm gonna deal an extra damage to enemies. I'm gonna have that one to reduce the cooldown of my skills, so I'm gonna use them more often, and I'm gonna use that one as well to deal damage more often on enemies. And then another tip, equip the pals and the skills you need in function of the content you want to focus on. For example, if I want to focus on PvP, I am a mage, I want to focus on that one, so I'm gonna have more HP regen, that one to lower the attack speed of the of the target, that one so I'm gonna have my cooldowns on my skills more often, that one to increase my skill damage by a lot, this is the way to go with a healer, with a mage, and that one so every time I'm gonna use a skill, I'm gonna deal an extra damage to enemies. I'm gonna have that one to reduce the cooldown of my skills, so I'm gonna use them more often, and I'm gonna use that one as well to deal damage more often on enemies. If you're in PvP, you want to use the ones that can reduce the attack speed of the, the opponent, uh, the ones that are increasing your HP regen, the ones that are lowering the damage you are gonna take, so that one is great as well. And in terms of skills, that one is great to increase your attack no matter the class you have. And these are the two ones you want to use absolutely or almost everywhere. There is only one content in which you don't want to use them. This is that content, the Blazing Cave, because the boss is not going to do damage to your hero. In the Grumpy Big Head, if you want to make your git progress further, you need to equip these two skills because you are going to survive longer. And if you are in the top line, you want to survive as long as you can. And so the more allies uh, alive, the more the damage you are going to have at the end. So make sure that you are using both of these. That one to have a shield really, really often, every 19 seconds to protect your hero. And that one to heal a lot your heroes. This is the best one you have in the game. And then you have some. That one for a mage to increase your skill damage. This is great. That one to increase your attack as well. Uh, that one to reduce the attack speed of targets. This is another absolutely great one. If you are using... Uh, a warrior or a archer, you want to have a lot of attack speed and that one is going to be great. Even if it's a blue one, it's going to increase your attack by a lot. And don't pay attention to these effects because uh, it's permanent effect. You don't need to equip the, the skill to get the, uh, the bonuses there. It's, they are permanent. For warrior and uh, archer, that one is great as well because you are going to have more basic attack damage. If you are using pals that have a lot of attack speed and damage multiplier, you want to use that one so they are going to have more damage over time. So versus a long fight, on a long fight, you are going to have more damage if you are using that one as well. You can as well reduce the attack of targets using that one. It can be great to use that in PvP or versus a boss who can deal a lot of damage to you. So make sure that you are switching your skills and pals uh, in function of the content you want to complete. You do always your battles with that button, enter the fight until it ends, you are not going to waste a lot of time and you are going to progress further through the dungeon. Never do that, it's a waste of keys. 
in the family hall, make sure that every day you are doing all your donations. You are gonna get a ton of rewards. The first one is free and the others cost only a few diamonds, so make sure that you are buying everything. You are gonna help your guild and you are as well gonna get more rewards and so you are gonna be able to buy more stuff in the sh guild shop. And in the family shop, I am buying first these, all the drills and all the bombs I can so I can progress further at the mine. And the deeper you go in the mine, the more the resources, the more the ore you are going to obtain. And so the faster you are going to progress in the tech park. And this is great if you want to have more stats earlier in the game. So make sure that you are buying all of these and if you have some extra coins remaining you can still buy some magic lamps so you are gonna get more items and more levels and more gold on your account to power up your lamp. Oh and as well it's really important to be part of a big family because every time you are gonna have a win in the brawl you are gonna get a ton of rewards look at that 1800 i got some soul and many other rewards as well look at that one because we all the top one family so i am gonna have more souls in the future I'm gonna try to beat the ass of that boss with my guild. We are currently on the level 21, but we are the top guild of the first servers in the game. These are the rewards I get by participating in the event. So make sure that you are doing that for your guild. Now something really, really, really important. This is the key to power up your account in the game, especially if you are free to play or low spender, because otherwise you are not gonna be able to reach high ranks in this kind of event, the rush event. These are the best ones you have in the game. For example, this is the Mount Rush. I made another video, you can check that. I saved all my diamonds for that event only because I was able to buy some clock winders and with all the clock winders I had I was able to clear all the four rounds of that event and get 8,000 hammers. I was able to use the hammers to power up my artifacts and I got a huge stats increase thanks to this move. Okay really important to do that and you have many resources that you need to save. I'm gonna show that to you right now. So there on the screen you have all the uh, rush events in the game. The first one being the prayer rush in which you have to save a ton of fruit to spend them on the prayer statue only during the event. Uh, it's hardly achievable as a free to play because you, if you want to clear all four rounds you are going to need a total of 354,000 fruits but at least you can focus on clearing the first or the second round you are going to need 88,500 fruits per round. So that's a Lot, but make sure that you are saving a lot of fruits for that event only you are gonna get a ton of free rewards doing that so make sure that you are doing that the second event is the one I showed you right before this is the Mount Rush in which you have to use 800 keys on each round so a total of 3200 keys to save but you can save as well your diamonds because I'm gonna show that to you when you are in game, when you go in the shop, in that section, you can spend your diamonds to buy some clock winders. And this is what I did. I saved more than 80k diamonds and I converted them into clock winders. And so there we go. This is where I am currently on the event. I cleared all the four, th the four rounds and I am top 34 at the moment. So maybe I'm going to spend a bit more in order to try to get that. But this is where I am currently. And I was able to power up a lot my artifact thanks to all the hammers I had for free in the event. So then we are going to have the PAL rush in which you have to spend 2000 PAL coupons to clear only one round. So in total you are going to need 8000 coupons to clear the four rounds. And this is why I am currently saving all my PAL coupons. I am wasting a bit of time today, a bit of power, but it's okay because in uh, seven days when we are going to have the PAL uh, rush event, I am going to power up a lot. So if I show you for now, I have 2425. So if you save at least some diamonds, you can get some extra summons for the event. So this is 
one more time really important to save your diamonds and your coupons when you are gonna have this kind of event then we are also having a skill rush event same kind of event but that time for skills you need 2000 skill coupon to clear one round and 8000 to clear the four rounds then you have the tech rush this is the one we have currently on the first servers of the game in which you have to spend a ton of ore to clear some rounds but that one was not accurate on the screen you need 120 on the first event to uh, clear one round only so 480k or to complete the full four rounds and to get 8,000 hammers. So I saved a lot in the past and I am currently top 15 in the event without buying any extra. Because I did what I told you to do in the family shop before and buy all the drills and the bombs you can. Then you are going to have as well a Relic Rush event in which you are going to have to use a ton of Relic Shards to complete each round and I think, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was 110k uh, Relic Shards to complete one round only, so make sure that you are saving everything for now. We are also going to get a Soul Rush event, but we don't know anything yet about the souls. Uh, we need we are unlocking that on day 15 I guess so it's maybe better not to use our souls on uh, when we unlock the souls directly it's better to save our souls we are gonna get some through some events etc so make sure that you are saving these resources so you can see there this is a guide on we have on the official discord of the game you can find many information on the official discord so make sure that you are uh, having a look to the official discord the link in, to access it is in the description of my video as well uh, they are saying that you don't care about saving your gold okay you can use it however you want you, in fact you, you need to use it to power up your lamp right so it doesn't matter. Then it's essential to save your diamonds for the rush events and other dailies I showed you at the, uh, earlier in the video. Then you have the skills and pal coupons. You need to stock them after some days spent in the game. This is really, really important to save a lot for the rush events. The clock winders, same comment. Same for the ore. You want to stock a lot. You want to stock as well the relic shards, the uh, fruit roots and the souls but we don't have the souls yet so if you when you are gonna acquire some save some then the speed up coupons you can use them all the way you want it doesn't matter and then you have the calendar and it's gonna be the same for every server if your server started today then it's gonna start on day one day two day three etc it's gonna be the same for everyone so make sure that you are having a look you can know when you are gonna have the rush events during the first month of your server uh, this is really important for example in my case we are currently on the day 11 if I'm not mistaken no in in on the day 10 if I'm not mistaken and we have the Mount Rush event and the Tech Rush event and the next week we are gonna have the Soul Rush event because we are gonna unlock the souls on the day 15 in my opinion and finally on day 16 we are gonna have the Power Rush so in fact I have only six days left to save 8,000 PAL coupons and then on the next week you're gonna have the Skill Rush event and the Relic Rush event as well Something really important too in the future, we are going to unlock the parking wires in which we are going to be able to park our mounts to get some passive rewards over time. So you can see there everything is going to give to you over time depending on the mounts you have. So the current one, the motorcycle is going to give you a ton of rewards as well. So probably I'm going to try to summon to get at least that mount to prepare for the future. Uh, so it might help me a lot, but I don't know. I don't have more information about that event yet. And I don't know anything about the dormitory now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Have a nice day and see you in the next one. Bye bye.